Hello learners, myself Mona Malhotra. Today I am going to give my presentation on the topic teaching learning material that is TLM. We remember 30% of what we see. We remember 50% of what we see and hear. We remember 90% of what we say and do. I hear, I forget. I see, I remember. I do, I understand. Now let's talk about learning. Learning is the act of inquiring new or modifying and reinforcing existing knowledge, behaviors, skills, values or preferences which may lead to a potential change in synthesizing information, depth of the knowledge, attitude or behavior relate to the type and range of experience. Learning produces changes in the organisms and the changes produced are relatively permanent. It means learning is the acquired modification of behavior. Learning is a process in which four components interact and these components are teacher, student, curriculum contents and goals and last one is instructional material and infrastructure. As our fourth point is instructional material, so today our topic is on teaching aids or TLM. As it is clear from the slide that materials, teachers, learners, all three are interrelated with each other. Teaching materials are the aids used by the facilitator to help him or her in facilitating his or her lessons effectively. And learning materials are the aids used by the teachers, learners to help him or her effectively. But both teaching and learning materials can be big or small. So the teaching and learning materials can be bought and made easily by both the facilitator and the learner. Teaching materials is a generic term used to describe the resources teachers use to deliver instruction. Teaching materials can support student learning and can increase student success. Ideally, the teaching materials will be tailored to the content in which they are being used, to the students in whose class they are being used and the teacher. Teaching materials come in many shapes and sizes, but they all have in common is the ability to support student learning. Now, what are the requirements for the teaching learning material to be made to be used? The development of three H's in the sense of giving comfort zone to learn with ease. And the three H's are head, heart and hand. It means involvement of all these threes are needed for making TLM and for using TLM. It's a very beautiful quotation given by someone. Nowadays, learners expect schools to have state-of-the-art resources and they also expect the teachers will use them. Not to do so might be considered unprofessional. Now, we will discuss about teaching aids. It is important for teachers to reach all learners in a classroom. Therefore, the use of teaching aids facilitates this objective by assisting teachers in differentiating instruction. Using aids such as graphs, charts, flashcards, videos provides learners with visual stimulation and the opportunity to assess the content from a different vantage point. This gives each learner the opportunity to interact with the content in a way which allows them to comprehend more easily. Moreover, teaching aids help to make the learning environment interesting as well as engaging. As we move towards a more digital society, kids are being exposed to technology and digital devices at a very younger age. And teaching aids are improving the quality of education in today's schools while also providing students with a sense of excitement they desire. Next is teaching aids are becoming the norm in the classroom as traditional classrooms with blackboard and chalk become a thing of the past and smart classrooms become the norm. Teaching aids are growing in popularity and advancement. Moreover, blackboards are being replaced with white and smart boards. TVs are being replaced with LCD projectors and screens. And educators are becoming more focused on students growing with technology and integrating it into the curriculum. And the students are making podcasts, videos, and even creating web quests all of which are sound teaching aids to incorporate into the classroom. The Indian National Education also outlined the importance of teaching aids and in, a, in these words, 
the supply of teaching aids to every school is essential for the improvement and the quality of the teaching. It would indeed bring about an educational revolution in the country. Same in 1986, the National Policy on Education instituted Operation Blackboard Scheme for school wherein every school was to be provided by the State Department with a good black and modern teaching materials and aids including a radio and tape recorder. Now we will discuss about characteristics of good TLM. The first one is the TLMs need to be attractive to the children. Size, color and in some cases the smell and taste or sound are some of the attributes of the materials which attract the attention of young learners. Second one is familiarity of TLMs will help to introduce new concepts. The children can also manipulate these materials with ease for meaningful learning of new concepts. Third one is the material should have utilitarian value. No material is a good or bad TLM. It is in the proper use that makes the material good or bad. A beautiful and attractive flower increases the aesthetic sense, but it is not a good material to teach the properties of a square. And the next one is materials of multiple utility like dice, sticks, marbles, cubes, flashcards can have multiple uses in nearly all subject areas of elementary school curriculum and are hence more in demand as TLMs in the school. Further, ease of handling the materials which include sturdiness means they should be strong enough for handling, lightweight and safety and is an important characteristic for which such materials are preferred in the teaching learning process. It means we should use those teaching TLMs in the study process which are harmless for children. Next is novelty of the material also attracts the children. Unusual materials or novel use of the familiar materials are the attractive features of good TLMs. Now, how should we use teaching aids? A good well-designed teaching aid, first, it should promote perception. It should promote understanding. Next, it help reinforce the spoken word. Aid memory retention through repetition, but repetition through a different medium. Next is, it motivate and arouse interest through requiring students to use different senses to learn. It means TLM requires the use of all senses. It make effective use of the teaching time available to learn. So these are the things which a well-designed teaching material aid should include. Now we will discuss about types of teaching aids. As there are many aids available these days, but we may classify these aids as also follows visual aids, audio aids and audio visual aids. Now let's talk about visual aids. The aids which use sense of vision are called visual aids. For example, actual objects, models, pictures, charts, maps, flashcards, flannel board, bulletin board, chalkboard, overhead projector, slides etc. Out of these blackboard and chalk are the commonest ones. It means visual aids are those aids which involves our senses of vision. Now other one is audio aids. These aids involves the sense of hearing and these aids are called audio aids. For example, radio, tape recorder, gramophone, etc. And the third one is audio visual aids. It's clear from the meaning from the two words audio and visual. It means the aids which involve the sense of vision as well as hearing are called audio visual aids and examples are television, film projector, film strips etc. Now we move further to further categorization of TLM that is teaching learning material. The first one is real objects or experiences. The students get first hand experiences by directly using real objects, persons and events around them. However, possession of objects may lead to learning. You must try to show the real objects to the students while teaching so that they get direct experience of the objects with reference to the concept they are expected to learn. But there are many reasons it is not always possible to bring the real objects to the classrooms. 
and the reasons are first one is the size of the object sometimes the tlm are too large in size to carry or to store in the classroom and sometimes they are too small to be seen by the students so this is one of the basic reason next one is safety if dangerous species like snake scorpion etc are to be brought into the classroom it could affect the safety of students so it's not at all safe to for, to bring all these objects in the classroom the third one is cost objects can become too expensive for classroom use in teaching environmental studies in lower classes and science in higher classes many direct experience can be given to the students for effective understanding and the next categorization is prepared tlm we are familiar with materials specifically prepared for teaching and learning particular subjects or topics maps charts pictures models toys marbles colored sticks flash cards number and alphabet cards are example of some of the most common prepared tlm known and used by teachers for our classroom requirements we acquire these materials in two ways first is procuring from the market and the other is developing by ourselves or sometimes involving the student it means we can prepare tlm in two ways first we can also buy it from market another we can prepare it by ourselves or we can take the help of students now here are some reasons that why adding real life material makes class even better first one is kinesthetics it's always better to have something to hold touch smell or feel means involvement of senses next is it makes the learning experience more enjoyable third one is real life connection because we can see we can touch we can feel so it is related with real life next is it generates excitement among students next breaking out of the worksheet monotony is always beneficial and the last is there is no limit to the things you can create now let's move further to the more types of tlm there are six types of tlm we can talk about first one is visual or verbal print or duplicated next is visual pictorial non projected two dimensional third is audio fourth is visual non projected three dimensional fifth is visual projective that is still and the last is audio visual projected that is with motion now let's talk about visual print or duplicated and it includes textbooks supplementary books reference books encyclopedias magazines newspapers documents clippings duplicated written material program learning material and self instructed modules and case studies and case reports and under visual pictorial non projected two dimensional category comes blackboard writing and drawing charts posters maps diagrams graphs photographs and cartoons and the third one is audio in audio it includes human voice gramophone records audio tapes and discs stereo records radio broadcast and telephonic conversation and the fourth category is visual non projected three dimensional aids and it includes model mock up globe relief map specimen puppet and hologram fifth one is visual projected that is still and it includes slide film strip transparency overhead projector microfilm micro card and computer and the last one is audio visual projected that is with motion and it includes motion picture film television closed circuit television video cassettes or disc multimedia computer and slide tape presentation now we will talk about the need of using teaching aids the first is as every individual has the tendency to forget but the proper use of teaching aids help to retain more concept permanently second one students can learn better when they are motivated properly through different teaching aids third is teaching aids develop the proper image when the students see hear taste and smell properly moreover teaching aids provide complete example for conceptual thinking next is the teaching aids create the environment of interest for the students it also helps to increase the vocabulary of the students teaching aids help 
the teacher to get some time and making learning permanent and the teaching aids provide direct experience to the students. Now let's talk about importance. What is the importance of teaching learning material? Teaching aids play a very important role in teaching learning process. Importance of teaching aids are as follows. First one is motivation. Teaching aids motivate the students so that they can learn better. Next is clarification. As it is clear from the word clarification means to clarify. Means through teaching aids the teacher clarify the subject matter more easily and comfortably. Third one is discouragement of cramming. Teaching aids can facilitate the proper understanding to the students which discourage the act of cramming. Next is to increase the vocabulary. Teaching aids helps to increase the vocabulary of the students more effectively. Next is it saves times as well as money. Other is it makes classroom live and active. Teaching aids make the classroom live, attractive as well as active. It avoids dullness and last one, it provides direct experience to the students. Now we will talk about utilization of learning resources. What are the points these resources provides us? First is clarity. Second, attention and interest. Third one is best motivators. Obviously, the TLM are the best motivators for the students. Use of maximum senses as it involves the involvement of all the senses. So it makes the learning effective and permanent. Next is based on maximums of teaching. Next, saving time and efforts. It encourages participation. It introduced variety and development of scientific approach. Tenth, promotion of international understanding and meeting the individual differences. Now TLM can be prepared by students also. It means not only teachers can prepare TLM, even students can participate and show interest in preparing TLMs. Let's talk a, a small story of a school. One day a teacher discussed in his classroom that the available green board dusters are not suitable for these wall boards. They do not give a long service. What the innovative idea to solve the problem is? Teacher prompted the students to prepare some cloth dusters. Cloth dusters was very suitable for those green boards. He gave the idea how to prepare the smart and innovative cloth dusters and motivate the students to prepare the cloth dusters. He arranged the raw materials for those dusters. How nice! The next day students prepared very nice cloth dusters and brought them in school. It is an example that how can a teacher use students creativity and how can a teacher motivate the students to do something good as well as innovative. Now let's talk about textbooks as TLM. A textbook is a collection of the knowledge, concepts and principles of a selected topic or course. It's usually written by one or more teachers, college professors or education experts who are authorities in a specific field. Most textbooks are accompanied by teacher guides which provide you with the supplemental teaching materials, ideas and activities to use throughout the academic years. Remember, no textbook is perfect and no textbook is complete. It is but one resource at your disposal. Use it as a blueprint, a guideline or an outline. Textbooks provide you with several advantages in the classroom. It means to now let's discuss about the advantages of using textbooks in the classroom. Textbooks are especially helpful for beginning teachers. The material to be covered and the design of each lesson are carefully spelled out in detail. Moreover, textbooks provide organized units of work. A textbook gives you all the plans and lessons you need to cover a topic in some detail. A test book series provides you with a balanced chronological presentation of information. Moreover, test books are a detailed sequence of teaching procedures that tell you what to do and when to do it. There are no surprises, everything is carefully spelled out. Next is, text books provide administrators and teachers with a complete program. The series is typically based on the latest research and teaching strategies. Good textbooks are excellent teaching aids. They are a resource for both teachers as well as students. Now, we will discuss about ICT that is Information and Communication Technology. 
Information and communication technology is an umbrella term that include any communication device or application that encompasses radio, television, cellular phones, computer, network hardware and software, satellite systems among others as well as various services and application associated with them such as video conferencing and distance learning. Now we can associate ICT and TLM. What's the use of ICT in and TLM? Information and communication technology has brought new possibilities in the classroom. Internet and interactive multimedia are of great significance for teaching. It needs to be effectively integrated into the formal classroom activities for enriching the content and quality of teaching and learning. For this, the teachers need to prepare themselves to keep pace with the application of technology in the classroom. Computers have already come into the classroom of many schools and in the near future, most schools would have such facilities available for students. Now, what are ICT tools? It includes multimedia PC, laptop, notebook, CDs and DVDs, digital video, still cameras, internet and its tools like email, browsers, website, search engines, chat, etc. Computer aided instruction and computer mediated video audio conferencing. It includes digital libraries, ebooks and electronic publications and Microsoft publications and which includes newsletters, posters and brochures. Now what is the importance of ICT? ICT is important as a source of knowledge, as a medium to transit knowledge and as a means of interaction and dialogue. The role of ICT in education. The first is to stimulate interest and motivation in learning process. Next is to change the traditional way of teaching, implementing the use of multimedia technologies such as video, images, animation and visual effects etc. Next is new opportunities for authentic tasks and materials to develop and practice learner skills including reading, writing, listening and speaking and teaching learning interaction between teachers as well as students. Now let's discuss about activity based learning. Activity based learning, activity lear or learning through activity and active learning are synonymously used here to mean the process the learner used to acquire experiences by being involved in an activity. The activity may be physical or mental or a combination of both as in majority of learning activities. For example, when a child is using her knowledge of addition and subtraction to check the bills of the grocery shop, it is more of mental activity rather than physical. But when she is planning and organizing an outdoor game, she has to combine her physical skills in playing the game with her mental organization of modes and strategies of play in order to win. Now how should we take care of teaching learning material? Here is the precautionary measure taken for before something happens. Care of TLM means looking after TLMs carefully and in looking after TLMs it could include the following covering of books, using of cupboards, washing of hands before handling the equipment, putting away TLMs after use, correct storage of TLM and keeping TLMs away from storage of water. Now how we should manage the TLMs, management of teaching learning materials. Probably one or more of the following reasons can be attributed for not using any TLMs. First one is no TLM or inadequate numbers of TLMs are available in the classroom. Next is appropriate or relevant TLMs are not in the store of the classroom or school. Third one is it is difficult to sort out the relevant TLMs from a huge collection of materials stored in the classroom or school. Last is many teachers think that use of TLMs takes more time and in turn slows down the coverage of course. These reasons are indicative of lack of proper planning and management of procuring, using and maintaining TLMs in the classroom. The management of TLMs is required at three stages of classroom transaction. The first is collecting, next is developing and the third is procuring TLMs. 
Now let us talk about collection of TLMs. Usually TLMs are acquired either by collecting materials or preparing them or sometimes involving students to prepare. We can either collect no cost materials or purchase the required materials available in the market. We know that our immediate natural and social environments around our school are rich in materials which can be used for learning purposes. Moreover, besides collecting real objects from the immediate environment, we can also collect several TLMs which are not available in our near area. Materials like rocks, minerals, different types of food grains, feathers of birds might be collected from our acquaintances or contacts at different places. Involving students in collecting materials for classroom has several benefits. It means we can involve students in, in making TLMs in making as well as collecting materials. First is it will help you to have a huge collection with very little effort without any substantial cost. Second is it would encourage students to explore the world around them and make them realize that every element in the immediate environment can be a source of learning. Moreover, such involvements of students in collecting, arranging by categories, using them in learning activities and storing and maintaining them in the classroom help these young students in their healthy cognitive growth, which is very vital at the early stage of schooling. Now let us talk about preparing TLMs. While preparing materials, you need to consider the following things. First, prepare a list of materials and the approximate quantity of each material that you need to develop much in advance. Second is, preferably plan from the beginning of the academic session. Next is, keep sufficient raw materials like paper, drawing sheets, cardboard, paste, paints, clay, thermocol sheets and cutting instruments scale and measuring tapes and such other tools ready for use as when required. Involve students in planning and preparing the materials. Their involvement is crucial in these activities because they love to be active in such creative activity. But they will learn a great deal incidentally while planning and preparing the materials. Further, they would be extremely careful in handling and preserving the materials as they would not like to damage the things they have developed. While planning and developing TLMs, focus more on preparing such materials which are durable, usable in multiple ways on different occasions and in more than one subject or content area. Moreover, arrange exhibitions in your schools where students would demonstrate the TLMs they have developed in their respective classes. This would definitely encourage the students to compete for developing further and innovative material. And the next one is identify talented students, resourceful colleagues and local artisans and seek their guidance in developing the materials. Now how to store TLM? The following minimum conditions need to be ensured for proper and safe storage of materials. First is for ease of access and use the materials, the storing place should be inside the classroom or nearer to the classroom. Next is, we can arrange the materials in different categories and accordingly place them separate in the racks, almira or shelf. For example, different types of seeds are to be sorted out and each type of seeds is to be kept in a separate polythene packed or jar. Flashcards are to be sorted theme wise and kept in separate packs. Similarly, other materials like rocks, minerals, pictures, charts are to be properly arranged. TLM used for one time, several times may be kept separately. The racks where the materials are needed need not to be high, rather they should be within the reach of the students. Now using and maintaining TLMs. Ensure availability of sufficient TLMs in the classroom for the free use of the students. While preparing your lesson notes in a subject for a specific period, plan for TLM to be prepared for demonstration, for group work as well as individual work. If you are planning to use the locally available perishable material and trust some students to collect those from the locality and come with them to the class. Ensure that the TLM selected are relevant to the topic. 
Use wall activities, floor activities, materials prepared inside and outside the classroom like garden, playground and create a small group of students in your class who would be the leaders in collection, preparation and maintenance of the TLM in the now last, TLM corner and its use. A TLM corner is a corner or a place in the classroom convenient to all where all the TLMs used for learning and teaching of different subjects are kept systematically so that both teachers and students can use it with ease. All the materials may be arranged subject or theme wise in such a manner that all students can fetch and replace them easily. Besides the TLM, you can store several other materials and equipments in this corner like worksheets, scales, balance, ways, pliers, scissors, hammer, drying sheets, coloring, plain paper, etc. Teacher, the greatest innovator. Any, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. To teach is to learn. Teachers should guide without dictating and participate without dominating. The critical factor is not class size, but rather the nature of the teaching as it affects learning. It means learning never ends. Thank you.